What's up, fellas? How you guys doing, man? How's it going? Hey. What's up, man? Hey, welcome back. It's great uh, to have you back, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, you know, you don't do it for a week, and you know, I miss you guys, man. Been <laughs> quarantined uh, big time, dude. It's COVID ain't no joke, man. It really it sucks. It really yeah. does suck. Dude. We're, we're glad to have you here tonight, but you're still not feeling 100, percent right? You're still, yeah, still no. Affected. Yeah, I am. I'm still contagious. I'm still infected. Uh, I think they they said, uh, you know, probably around the 10 day mark is when you're not uh, 10 10 day to 14 day mark. You're not infected, right? Or you're not contagious. But yeah, I mean, what they say is real. Uh, like I don't have a sense of smell. And then what's crazy is you you'll uh, you'll feel like you're getting better, and then all of a sudden you you got like, go back. Mm-hmm. It's so weird, dude. It, it uh, it's it's just strange. It really is strange, man. So I'm gonna do the best I can tonight. Uh, hey, you know, we're happy to yeah. have you. <laughs> Feels Please. normal again. As much <laughs> yeah. as much as I enjoyed the experience of hosting, I think uh, you know. Yeah, we all have our roles on this show. Let's just put it out. <laughs> just oh, stay man, in your yeah. lane. It feels good to be back uh, in our lane. <laughs> so what, are you, what are you doing for entertainment? Because you're probably locked up. Uh, you know, quarantine. You know, I your watch. House. Uh, I watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> I watch, Fair. dude. I watch horrible, horrible bosses. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is uh it's hilarious man but really you you really sleep a lot um you do a lot of sleep and like naps i mean you just be like out you know because like i said you don't have any energy um but yeah i don't really do much man i just kind of look at the walls <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's all you you man. have energy to do man i mean it's uh i mean as you could tell i sound very nasally mm. uh but it's, I, dude, I'm ready to be done with this. Like, yeah. I am totally ready to be done with this. But you know what? The cool thing is, though, uh, everybody, you know, in the Bills community has been sending, like, uh, a lot of support, man. Like, I, I give a shout out awesome. to everybody uh, who uh, read my little post on Twitter this past week. And they got over, like, a thousand likes or something like that, man. Uh, thanks for the prayers, seriously, because... Man, you don't really know until you find yourself with the Rona. <laughs> but it's real, dude. It's not. It ain't no. It ain't no joke. Some people have don't have many symptoms at all. Others do. Luckily, I'm not one of those who uh, having you know some of those major issues that others are having. Um, but, well, look at the bills, right? I mean, Tommy Sweeney. Yeah, what was that myocarditis or something like that? Is what it's, it's called. One of the heart complications from COVID that they're seeing after the fact can be there. So, I mean, mm-hmm. luckily he's got an advanced series of doctors to examine <laughs> him, and they they found this, but it may very well have ended his football career, and and that's pretty wow. scary. So, yeah, it it did, or there, or it might. I mean, right now they said he's definitely done for the season. <laughs> he's not coming back this season, and. As you know, as these things usually go, a heart condition like that, there, there, there's no like reversal cure for that kind of thing. So uh, most likely, if if he's not able to play with this now, if that's the doctor's decision, my guess is he's he's not going to be playing football anymore. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that bad. sucks. That yeah. sucks, man. It's real, that man. Sucks. I mean, look yeah, at these is. guys. These guys are peak physical performance. And yeah, yeah, right. Huh? Yeah, something that serious though. Football is a back burner. You exactly. Know? You know, you got to take care of yourself first. You know, football is just yeah. a game at the end of the day. But wish him the best for sure. Yeah, no, man. Prayers go up for for the Sweeney <laughs> and myself. I'm not out of the woods yet, man. Yeah. Uh, Definitely, you know, it's it is what it is. I'm just gonna. I haven't even been like f- football. I don't even know what football <laughs> is right now, dude. <laughs> I just yeah, don't. You didn't catch anything got, on Sunday, huh? Yeah, I kind of been out of the loop, but uh, well, it's a it's a great time to be back because the Bills didn't play. Yeah, right. right. The right. Patriots lost, and Tom Brady lost. So That's welcome right. back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hey, we got some uh, people in here, man. Let's say what's up to PJ Ty. What's good, man? How you doing, Peter Nordby? What's good, man? How how are y'all? Yes, I am back. I am back. <laughs> Oh, uh, Kathy with the wild wishes. Kathy, yeah. Hey, what's up, Kathy? How you doing? <laughs> Reptile in the house, man. 
Yeah, dude, I've been hanging around with the Raiders, bro, and the Ravens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, you know that party we had with uh, Mark Ingram on Sunday night, dude. It was it was lit. But yeah, man. You know, we we uh, definitely share in the Rona. We Rona brothers, right? <laughs> um, oh man, dude. Uh, Oh man, my guy Mookie. Mookie, what's good? Hey, Mook. What's good, what's up, Mook? Mook? Hey. That's the homie right there, <laughs> man. That's the homie. So, um, but anyway, man, not for the, the COVID talk. It's Turkey Week, man. It's uh th- yeah. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving week. Uh I hope everybody's with their family and friends. Well, not friends, but you guys can uh do what you do. You can Skype and do all that. But yeah, man, it's a time to be with family, uh, football. And, uh, you know, you just kind of keep on keeping on, right? Shit. <laughs> but. All Tough right, year guys. for the holidays, but, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. It's, it's the That's weirdest holiday season I've for, ever seen, but, man. Yeah. It's so weird. It's so weird, man. I never seen it. Like, right? It's very bizarre, right? It is, dude. It's I don't even know if it counts. I don't even know if this counts as a holiday season. I mean, think about it. The Bills are seven and three. You can't buy a damn PS5. Because <laughs> apparently they don't know how to make enough of those. Okay. I, I thought I was like, I'm going to try to get a PS5 while I'm in quarantine. But that, that ain't happening because you can't even, you can't pre-order. You can't sniff it. You can't even smell a PS5 right now. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you something, man. Man, Buy an Xbox. Know. Xbox. Hell no. 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 I'm a PlayStation no. guy. You too, have a PlayStation? Man. I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah dude. Just, just like, get an Xbox, man. <laughs> <laughs> man so it's like i don't know how much uh how much christmas vacation one can watch in the holiday <laughs> season but you know i'm about to crack that open man. Yeah. i'm about to crack the, the christmas season. vacation over and i am feeling uh very holiday-ish because i'll i'll i've even listened to christmas music in my downtime uh that should tell you how like you know bleak it is right now dude no interaction you just kind of <laughs> too soon whatever. Man. we got to get through thanksgiving first yeah dude we got to get through thanksgiving man but uh anyway so i got i got some stuff for y'all man yeah even, we still had football this week even we did have week. football this week you know got i got i mean it was a little opportunity to get a little little something in to catch up a little bit but uh for those of you who don't know you know this is this is how we do our show, man. We come up with topics. Well, I come up with topics for our fellas to see. Uh, we we kind of debate those. So definitely, I'm gonna need some uh, some 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 arguing tonight. But this is what's popping when we go around the league. We talk about the latest and the greatest of the NFL and what's been going on. I I, I do have some topics for you guys tonight. Nice. Uh, even in my slumber, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hit you with this one. Well, let's do this one. Ravens get pumped during the pregame. So, now, Ravens, Titans, they went at it this week. We know the uh, the Titans came out with the dub after a 29-yard touchdown run by the mm-hmm. Travis, not Travis Henry, but Derrick Henry. <laughs> Travis Henry was a Buffalo Bill. <laughs> <laughs> by all means, excuse me, everyone. Keeping it in-house. <laughs> I'm a little rusty. I'm a little rusty. We're forgiving but, you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Derrick Henry with a 29-yard run. Uh, however, but prior to the game, you had, uh, Mike Vrabel and those guys out there on the, on the Ravens logo, man, they were chopping it up, dude. And, uh, it was, some, they were beefing kind of reminds me of a, uh, like a college game, you know, college, college players do that. I never thought that I'd see that, uh, in an NFL game. Mm-hmm. I mean, we did see T.O. pull a stunt like this during the game after a touchdown catch, he, uh, ran to the, to the Cowboys, uh, star and spiked the ball. So, I mean, this is just one of those things, man. Like, I look at this, guys, and I'm like, okay. You know, before you get emotional, you, you look at it and you go, okay, the Ravens are kind of a bully. Like, when you think of a, a, a modern NFL bully, like, they impose their will, right? And you got Mike Vrabel, this tough guy, this coach, and they weren't taking no shit, right? And so they come out there and Harbaugh's out there, and you got to give credit to to, to the Harbaugh's because they don't they don't take <laughs> nothing either. But in a fight, you know, like Mike Vrabel's taking prisoners, bro. I mean, he's <laughs> that dude is he's he, enormous. He, he eats bolts for breakfast. <laughs> like that guy, <laughs> you, you do not want to mess with that dude. Okay, like he's one of those white boys you see and you go, 
No, nah, he crazy. <laughs> I, I ain't doing it, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> so these guys are out there beefing, man. Did you guys get to see it? Like, what are your thoughts, man? Like, cause I, you get punked on your own home field and then you lose. Oh, what does that say yeah. about you, mm. man? What does that say about you? Ouch. Right. I, I didn't catch it. Eric, did you catch it? Did you see it? I didn't catch the whole thing. I saw the, the highlights of the, the pregame. I did watch the <laughs> game, but I thought like AJ Brown was one of the people beefing, right? For the Titans. Yeah, oh, AJ Brown. Had, but he made a play to back it up. So Touchdown, he, yeah. Big hey, if that works for your team, that works. They're a seven and three team. They're one of the better ones in the NFL, and they just knocked out the Ravens, who I think were favored, right, Anthony? Oh Ravens yeah, we're favored oh, yeah. at home. The so Titans I mean, we're getting six points. Hey. I'm, I, hey, that was one of my big bets this week of my my five. So yeah. if, I don't know if you remember, but it kind of reminds me of when uh, Rex Ryan was a coach. The Bills go to New England. I think it was Aaron Williams is over on the Patriots sideline. You know, getting in their face, <laughs> yeah. getting in players' face, but they didn't back it up. <laughs> yeah, that didn't <laughs> work. Beat. It was embarrassing, right? <laughs> the Titans didn't work backed it up, so I have no problem with it. Hey man, it's like it's like it's like. When you guys play, I mean, you guys play football, you played a, a, some kind of sport or even, I mean, even if it wasn't like organized, like you don't have somebody come in your hood and then just punk you, dude. Like you just don't have that. Hey, <laughs> yeah. And my, in my hood, if somebody came in and punked you, you fighting. And, oh. and if you get your ass whooped, you're not coming home. You better stay out there until you whoop some ass. Justin, uh, Justin over here says McDermott would whoop his ass. I don't know who that <laughs> McDermott's whooping, but it ain't Mike Ravens. Yeah, no, that's a that's a yeah. that's a man. Child, he might be dude. whooping his own players' butts if they did that, though. You, you know, McDermott yeah. wouldn't handle but that. McDermott, they, you mentioned crazy white people. I mean, McDermott, <laughs> he's just, he's scrappy, man. He fits that mold, dude. He fits that mold. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, it's it, it was cool. It was it was interesting to see. I that. like I like the uh, idea of competitive fire. Why not? juice it up a little bit it's fun to see i mean this yeah. isn't mma or anything it's not quite as interesting as those guys going head to head but it, it's nice to add some fuel to the fire and like like eric said it they it paid off they yeah. they talked the talk after walking the walk so uh yeah, yeah i did, mean <laughs> that, they, they did what they had to do so i mean that's all that counts they got the w it's embarrassing <coughs> for, for baltimore for sure because now you had a, a, a tough loss the week before in a game that you were heavily favored in, and now a loss in a competitive game that really mattered for playoff seating and playoff, you know, uh, scenarios. And and now yeah. they find themselves on the outs. So they've got a lot of they a lot of work to do there. They're definitely heading in the wrong direction right now. No, they are. Did you guys? Uh, Yannick and Gakwe was just nasty in that game, dude. Did y'all get a chance to check out Yannick? Because that dude was in. Tannehill's grill all day long. They had no answer for him, man. And it's sad because, like you guys said, they are they couldn't uh they could miss the playoffs, man. They very well could miss the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And uh that was a Super Bowl favorite for a lot of people. And and you know, people like Colin Cowher was talking like the dude that they were gonna go uh 16 and oh right. yeah. And, and we, we talked about that on the on oh, the show we did. the yeah. side. And it was like, you know, that's crazy. crazy. Like that you ain't you ain't that good. Like and Lamar Jackson, people are just now starting to realize that Lamar Jackson can't uh hit every area of the field. I mean, no. you know, what what uh Tennessee and, and uh, you know the Patriots even did was they they took they took the middle of the field away. You know, inside yep. the numbers, they're taking up, they're stacking, you know, zone defense and they're sending guys, uh, they're rushing guys and they're making Lamar Jackson uh, try to throw outside. And, you know, you could say, well, his receivers aren't getting separation or, or whatnot. He but could use another that, weapon. He could. He you know? could. He could. But right now, no. they ain't got it. And it's, dude, it's. And I mean, look at the players on that team. The defense. What's the defense's excuse? I mean, I know Tennessee has got some good players in in Henry and in in Brown, but they're they're not an explosive offense or anything. That that <laughs> your defense is supposed to be one of the best in the league, and right. and they can't handle that. Well, you're going to face better teams if you're trying to make the playoffs or if you get to the playoffs. You know, and and you're already far behind in the division to the Steelers. It's it's yeah. not looking good for you know. They're probably right now, the Ravens are probably the most overrated team coming into the season. And I think we talked about that, like you said, Sterling, when people were saying 16-0. and 0, I mean, I picked the Steelers to win the division. That's crazy to think that they could have gone yeah. undefeated. That's nuts. I mean, undefeated is crazy for any team. I, I, I still think Baltimore is maybe the third best team in the AFC. 
If you really? look around the league, they've they've lost to the Patriots, which could happen to any team. On paper. They lost to Tennessee, they lost to Pittsburgh, and they lost to Kansas City. They're all really good teams. But that's my point. They're, they're, yeah. They have that team on paper. Where well, is I mean, it? All these games are close. They've got though. no injuries. There was nobody you know, on Sunday who was major player that was out or, or hurt or whatever. They've got no excuses right now. And now they're at a disadvantage with the COVID situation. Now that they do have COVID problems, what you're right. only going to get worse. You're not going to well, get better. I mean, a lot of these games come down to a play, and the Ravens aren't making it. Yeah. Why are they I mean, making it though? And I don't I mean, think that's I mean, the best team in the AFC right Sometimes now. Yeah. it's luck, sometimes it's penalty, Certainly, sometimes no. it goes the other way, sometimes the other team makes a, a play. I mean, it's, so the biggest insult you just gave is you're saying the Ravens are better than the Buffalo Bills right now, and I don't see that in any way, shape, or form based on how they've played the last two weeks. No, I'd say they're pretty evenly close. matched. I think they both could be arg- arguments can be made for both teams to be the third best team in the AFC. So what you're saying is everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> no, I'm not, not saying that at all. I'm just How? playing, man. I'm just playing. I'm saying, Baltimore's better than they look. They've had a really tough schedule. And <laughs> okay, but they've lost they, a lot of close games this schedule. year. The Bills have played seven playoff teams. Come on. They also play the Jets twice, early Miami. Oh, I my mean, God. Look, look, Baltimore's okay, schedule is much more difficult than the we're, Bills. We're we, talking we about got, Buffalo here. You want to look at, look at the Bills, all right? If any, most, a lot of the people in the preseason, as we've talked about, as I said, or rant on the last show, pick the Bills to go nine and seven. And in the preseason, I said that was insulting to this team. That's not good enough. This team should at least be 12 and four. Anything less than 10 wins is, is embarrassing and it's not going to happen, right? But the people who predicted nine and seven, everybody right now, nobody, none of the analysts can say that the Bills have been playing their best football because it hasn't happened. We might have seen our best version of our offense, but our defense has barely showed up yet. So we're trending in the right direction. Any the fact that we haven't played our best football yet means that we will be playing our best football when it counts. And the Ravens cannot say that. They don't have any excuses. But the thing they, is it, it they're comes not gonna down. get better on defense and offense. They don't have major injuries. Dude, nine and seven and, and twelve and four aren't that different when you think about this season for the Bills. Did you predict Josh Allen to make that last second throw versus the the Rams? Oh, no. come on. Did, I, I didn't did you predict, predict Cam ref- Newton to fumble uh, the ball pause. at the 10-yard I line? Predict, I didn't predict the refs to I call mean, an interception so that was not an interception. It totally oh, changed man. the momentum of that game, but I did pick the Bills to win that game. Did Bills you pick much- the Bills? Did you pick the Bills to kick Seattle's ass? No. No, nobody so did. But- that works out. There's no way the Bills <laughs> – the bottom line is there's no way anybody can say the Bills have played the best football. No, no I don't think anybody's saying the Bills. No, are the exactly. Best football. But you but, cannot say that about the Ravens. There's nothing about the Ravens that says they're going to get better, other than the guys are on the field. Let's see if they can do better this week. Right. Well, right? I think their confidence could be broken now after losing three of the last four. They got Pittsburgh on Thanksgiving Day. True. I mean, that's true. That's a big, game game. That's a big part of it. The Bills are more confident right now, but I think talent wise, roster building. The Ravens are still a really good team. I, oh no, I don't think you know, that they're not a good team. Certainly. I think, I think they're still third I think best that, team. Right. I, well, I don't know. Paul just did it way. I don't year. know about third best team. Better but than the Bills. They what, are definitely what underperforming. Part of them is better than the Bills. They're underperforming. <laughs> their offense hey. isn't better than the Bills. Their defense isn't better than the Bills. Their quarterback isn't better than the Bills. What position are you picking that this team? Uh, their is defense is better, better than, than the Bills. Bills. Their secondary. Oh yeah, no, their their defense is definitely one hundred percent. Their offensive line. Their Look, players. If you put Josh Allen on Baltimore, they'd be a great team. The reason oh, that they, they're there, <laughs> these plays aren't being made for Baltimore, that one play that they need, is probably because Lamar Jackson is pretty limited as a passer. One play that they need? No, nah, there is a series of plays that <laughs> so, they need. I mean, need go back and made. look at these games, though. They're all close. They're all you know, one it's possession the NFL. games. Most games exactly. are. I mean, they're the all Cardinals, good teams they're playing. The Lions play teams close. I mean, it's. <laughs> not this you know what I'm yeah. <laughs> right, right, not right. this. They got blanked. Hey, <laughs> hold on though. Before we even, I gotta say what's up to my guy Brian, man. Brian, hey, what's yo. good, my dude? Yeah, dude, I'm uh, I'm hanging in there, man. Uh, thank you for uh, for uh, the messages, man. Checking up, dude. I appreciate all y'all, man. Brian, Brian's a real one for sure, dude. Uh, but yeah. So before we even continue on with this discussion, though, please. Follow, like, subscribe the Hoof Podcast, man. Cover one. You know, we are, uh, this is what we do. We are giving you guys great content in the middle of a pandemic, okay, (laughs) in a world crisis. Uh, But it don't stop, man. We do not stop. We got great shows, great podcasts, 
great film breakdowns and great analysis. Uh, this is this is cover one, man. We out here getting it. So um, we're gonna we're gonna shelf this Ravens discussion because <laughs> there's gonna be plenty of opportunities to dish on these guys. But I did want to tee this one up. Uh, Brady craps the bed on Monday Night Football. Yes, now, baby. That is the game. That I did, I did take Tee it up I, for I me, it. baby. <laughs> <laughs> I teed it up, and if you strike on this one, you're done. Uh, oh, Brady, oh Brady, uh, I mean, l- listen, man, washed up garbage oh, piece oh. of crap quarterback who should be not starting, who should have a backup, any backup in the league can do what he's doing on that team right now. Anybody, did you see those passes? I could have thrown those balls better than he did. Air, air mailing him, not even coming close to guys. Both of the touchdown passes he threw, he got lucky on. The, the defender or the receiver made a crazy play to catch the ball and then a crazy play to get in the end zone. The, the air why, mails, the interceptions to guys that were why right are you, to them. Why are you trashing uh, the boy Tom? Man, he, he was bad, he but he sucks. was not that. He oh, my was not God, are bad. you kidding me? That was the worst <laughs> performance of a quarterback that has ever played on a competitive team. No, nope. uh, there's no, no way on. you could say uh, that. I mean, come you on. Seen, have you're you a fan of the team. team? Have you seen? Tell me somebody. Game? Tell me another team that's had Super Bowl hype. That's had a quarterback in a game that they're favored to win. By the way, four and a half point favorite to win that game. Hey, I was Gilford. all over the Rams. The I'll name one. I'll name one. The Patriots. No. no. <laughs> come on. This he is what we thought he was uh, all year. I've been saying this since the preseason. That team is a 500 team, and that is it. And it's because of Tom Brady. He is the worst player on that offense. Period. <laughs> Other than aging old Gronkowski, who I'm surprised is still out there. Tom Brady is the reason that team is losing, and not the reason they're winning. He needs to hey, be benched. Oh my God. For- Oh I can bring God. in Blake Bortles. I mean, Tom Brady is the worst player in the real. offense. Is a pretty good. Floor. Did you see those passes down the field? <laughs> Anything over ten yards was over guys' heads. Was missing them completely. He got every call he could still from the refs from You're not calling it like he's, uh, he's a middle school quarterback. He was. I'm telling you, the guy does <laughs> not belong as an NFL quarterback anymore. Regardless of what you thought of him for the 10, 20 years, he was good. Now he's garbage, period. And he has been for the last three years. He's been trending in that direction. And now he's only getting worse. And then people say, are surprised. Yeah, and then the Monday say, Night Football well, announcers. Oh, my God. Garbage. Another, Anthony, another. Anthony. He is yeah. absolute garbage right now. Yeah. There is it all no, sounds good. It sounds pick, good. but Pick another so playoff un- contender look. in the NFL right now whose quarterback cannot do better than Tom Brady did. Anthony, come on. on. Eric, go ahead, dude. What you spit. Come on, Doc. Brady's still going to get thirty plus touchdowns. When's the last time a Bills quarterback had thirty plus? Well, we're not complaining. We're not comparing him to the Bills. Okay, okay, right now. But he's still a good quarterback. Want to compare him to Josh Allen? Come on. Okay, that's convenient this year. You know. (laughs) I mean, look, Brady's still going to get close to four thousand yards, thirty plus (laughs) touchdowns. Look, he's had and a few bad press games. Interception. He's, he's yes, the quarterback he's the they got they rid of. The game, he's Anthony. Jameis Winston. This is the third time oh, we've come on this show on and talked about Tom Brady being the reason that team lost. The third time I've said it twice already. Both of you were like, no, it was right. just a bad time. <laughs> three times is a goddamn trend. You he's get sure, one, you get two, you get three. Game, dude. Come on. Yeah, yeah. well, that, that roster, that offense, you <laughs> should win every game, like Sterling said. Yes. He's the favorite. So it's to easy win to point game. out that he's the problem because I mean he is the problem. Did you watch the game? Right. They're still a seven and fourteen. They're going to make the playoffs. Oh my god! No, they're, they're going to win a playoff game. No, they are not. Yes, no. they are. No, they're not. Who are they yeah, going to be in I the think... NFC? Unless they play the Eagles or, or could whoever wins Bay. the NFC East. No, they could be Green Bay. No. no. I, I oh yes, I, they can. The Bucks. The Bucks are still a good team. Brady had a bad game. Uh, another bad game to add to that. The third, I mean, he, um, he should have thrown. He should have thrown like four interceptions. To be quite honest, uh, they were he, horrible. <laughs> yeah, I know the pla- the passes were horrible. But you know, you look at the you look at the game from a X's and O's standpoint. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I think you know the, they don't have. They're still working on that rhythm. Brady is not what he was. I will agree with you there. He is not what he was. Uh, but also, you have to li- look at the fact that. His play does 
put them in certain positions to win. Now, you have to, like, if you're going to use a comparison, you might want to use, like, uh, Peyton Manning is a great comparison toward the end of his career is what Brady is right now. Uh, he's not going Bullshit. to... Bullshit! Don't even oh, go there! Oh, no, no it's true. Peyton it's Manning true. is yeah, ten yeah. times better than Tom Brady ever could be Did right now. Did you see his in last, his last years? two years? If Tom Brady re- retired three years ago, you could have said that. No, no you got it. No. Peyton oh, could not God. throw the ball God. late, late in this, the year he retired. Tom Brady can't throw the ball now! Look, the only argument you got and, statistically And you is, know what? Peyton Manning was at least a leader of his team. Peyton Manning at least showed up on the field with his team. Win, lose, yeah. or draw, he faced he, the other team. I mean, he was what out does Tom like Brady do? He goes crying off Osweiler the field because he didn't those. win. It's ter- Anthony's turning red again, y'all. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to stay red during this conversation. But the only thing you got going for is Tom Brady's going to break his career high in interceptions at 14. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's already done this. He's at nine right, right now. He'll, so, he'll get more than 14. It'll be a career high in interceptions for him. Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl. John Brady's not even going to come close no, no, no. to it. Peyton didn't win that Super Bowl. The Broncos won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Peyton yeah. Manning Von Miller won was a he was bigger impact the on that, of that team, team than Peyton Manning was. That's true. That's and, true. and look, the, the Bucks have a good running game. Their defense yeah. is top – is maybe not – They got a good defense. You know, it's not a top defense, but I think it's top half. Right. So what, Tom, what you're Tom, saying is Tom Brady is not he, the reason they're winning, and he is the reason fair. they're losing, which is what I've said for the last four but weeks. They're not a, but they're That's not a fine, losing. But they're not like don't have a losing record. I mean, they're still a very competitive right. team. You know what I'm saying? They so it's, it's 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 there's give and take there. It's not all Tom Brady. They are a competitive but, team, yes. Which is again, I'll repeat my point from the preseason until now. <laughs> Put any other quarterback on this team, and they will have the same record in the same thing, if not win another game. They are no better with Tom Brady at quarterback than they would be if Blake Bortles no. was playing quarterback than they would be <laughs> hey, if no. any other quarterback. Hey, no. on it's a that brain, team man. Playing. It's that brain, the experience. That's all it is with Brady. <laughs> I get he doesn't have the big arm right. he used to have, if he ever did have a big arm. What but. brain? His brain that made him cry baby <laughs> off the field instead of shaking hands and talking to people because he's a little okay. whiny well, let me, baby? Let me, let me, let me. That's personality. Let me, but... I'm going to chime in on this last comment, and then we're going to go to the next topic. But uh, Peyton, it says Peyton Manning was trash in Denver. They won despite Manning. Uh, so he won an MVP goes, here. He it, it, won an MVP the year before with five thousand no, no, no. yards. We're just talking about we're just talking Give about your last. Down. We're just talking about the last two seasons of Peyton Manning. Now, that was his second to last season. He, uh, yeah, they, no, no, they did win a Super Bowl, but there's there's more his to it than season. just statistically. I mean, the the leadership part that he brings to the table, checking in and out of plays, getting them getting them right. I mean, those things do matter. And even though if Brady's not being He's not great statistically, which he's not bad. He's playing like an average quarterback. Uh, you know, we're used to him playing as a as a top yeah. quarterback. He's not trash. He's definitely lost a step, but uh, they're still a good football team. And I don't think you know. I, I, I think there's hope for them in the exactly. playoffs. The team is good. The pieces there can't get any better. It's no, Tom Brady not, that is the problem. He's the problem. Period. It's a yeah. pretty good problem to have, though. I think. Hey, I'll take shit. I'll take that problem. <laughs> Tom Brady's your problem. Here's another no, one. Here's no, another man. one we can debate. He's 80 on. years old. His time is over. Get Here out of go. the league. Here we go. The <laughs> Finns, the Dolphins, they come back to earth this week, man. Uh, and they bench Tua. Now, now, Eric, what do I know? You are not a big fan of uh, rookie quarterbacks. That's not true. Justin Herbert, you 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 fanboy over Justin Herbert. No, but... I, just, I have my guys, and then there's the other guys I don't like. That's just how it is. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> my guys and not my guys. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm setting you up. So what's up, man? Like, uh, get talk to me about why why are the well, first of all, let's let's all acknowledge that the Dolphins came back to earth, and As they we people were saying that they were going to win the next three four games, and they lost in Denver. Uh, and there's well, no we, excuse. Can we just talk that? about draft night when I said the Dolphins should take Herbert? Mm-hmm. Can we just talk about that for one second? Go ahead. Anyway, yeah, one more <laughs> look, just imagine this Dolphins team with, with Justin Herbert this season. They're real competitors, in my opinion. Right? They've won some good, get, tough games this season, and I think they go as far as the quarterback takes them. Right? And a lot of that success will probably be their young offensive line, but you're going to go as far as, as your quarterback takes you, and – you know, started too late, and now you know benching him is just look. You're going to ride or die with him. That's what you yeah. have to do because now you're shaking his confidence. And if you look at Sam Darnold, I think his confidence got shook, and it's just not good. It's well, not right. healthy to shake the confidence at any time. We've, 
We've had a lot of praise on this show about for the coaching staff in Miami and how they're doing everything the right way and how you know they've got their players playing as best they possibly can. They get the most out of everybody. They get rid of the people who are problems, no matter who you are. You know, and this was the first big stumble. Like, what the hell are they doing? Like, that was a huge mistake. Benching Tua, you still lost the game. What What does benching him give you besides a controversy to fuel the media? You know, and and get all us excited about. Oh, now you're wondering if he really is your guy for the future. So yeah, I mean, it, it yeah, was it was bad, almost bad, as bad as going with you know Nate Peterman as your <laughs> starter week one. You know, I think it's just being a young coach. You know, you're, he follows his emotions. He wants to win. Like this team was in the hunt, right? Still are technically. Uh, you go to your experienced quarterback, hoping he'd pull out the game. You know, but hindsight, well, I, you can't criticize well, people for hindsight. But after the fact, you can, right? When your when your experienced quarterback is 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 a guy who throws more interceptions than touchdowns, usually. I mean, you gotta you gotta figure that you're. It's at least a more high risk decision to put him yeah, in. I mean, you it know, is. it's fifty fifty. All right, I would I would fits. prefer sticking to the rookie. <laughs> Then, then, yeah, that's what I mean. Fitz this is the guy. Is a true, fifty-fifty. Yeah. So, I mean, I would prefer to stick with the rookie and say, okay, let's see what you can do in this situation, right. than go yeah, to the guy yeah. who's a coin flip of is he going to throw right. an interception or is he going to bring mean, his back? You can't get greedy. You, here's the deal. I, I mean, I agree. I like the the move Brian Flores in starting to a. But again, if you're gonna if you're gonna play your young quarterback, you might as well just if there's highs and lows to come play it out. It. You should have never if you were if you were thinking, oh, I'm gonna pull him out when he has a bad game. You should never put him in in the first place because you had Fitz who was we all know what Fitz is. He's he's not very consistent. He's hot and cold, but he did give you uh, that veteran element in the room. He did give you a good chance to win. I think you know. If I said Tua fits, obviously Tua has the, the better long-term prospects, right? But as of right now, you're talking about this season, I, I don't see the, you know, is Fitz much better than Tua? Is Tua much better than Fitz? Eh, you know, it's a toss-up right now. I think uh, there's some things that 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 Fitz can can do that Tua can't right now in, in terms of reading the defense. Um, but, yeah, it kind of shook me that uh, he he took Tua out. Um, I think you should just let him play, man. And you know what was funny about that is they're only one score away. Yeah, you took him out in crunch time. Like, isn't that one of the two calling cards that he was such a clutch yeah, quarterback? I, and I, so I praised him. Why would you? It reminds me of Tim Tebow. He wouldn't play for three and a half quarters. So here, here we go. He shows like, up in the fourth, right? What are the highs from Tua so far? Well, he he processes the game really fast. He's accurate. He gets rid of the ball. Um, he does have a athletic element to him. And he's a good leader. Those are the highs from Tua so far, even though he's not always stunning statistically he's a rookie um you know justin herbert is the outlier Mm -hmm. uh joy burrow is an outlier just based on what they what they've been able to do from a statistical standpoint but yeah there are highs to his game we can't deny that um he he does do some things well however to you guys uh credit here you're going to kill his confidence if you, if you do those kind of things. Now, Tua's going to give you the right answer in the media. He's going to say, well, you know, coach felt like, you know, Fitz gave us the best chance to win the game and so forth. But when you're in crunch time, like, that's McDermott would have never done that. I was Josh just about Allen. to say, think of the Bills, right? Josh Allen has had some rough third quarters. He's had some rough games. He's had some rough starts. But he turns it on in the fourth quarter, and he's pulled out some of those wins. And And could you imagine if they – benched him in the third quarter when we were down a touchdown before he gets a chance in the fourth quarter. Like that just wouldn't happen. It's, it's unthinkable. It, it doesn't happen, but they did, they chose to do that. And, and it's crazy. So, I mean, it was definitely not the right move. I, I, I don't think there's any, any rationale to support the move at this point. Even if yeah. they had won, it would have been like, okay, great. You won. Now what happens the next game? You're going to throw Tua back out there or Fitz because yeah. he won you the game. Yep. There's no rationale for putting him in there. Nope. Unless yeah, Tua was there was there was talk about oh Tua rolled his ankle or something, but they they didn't say anything about that. They said it was a coach's decision. So and, and McDermott did have a situation like this. He benched Tyrod Taylor for Nate Peterman. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> had a five interception game back right. to Tyrod Taylor. But, they were but. they were in the hunt and in, 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 you know during that period. No, and they were and they ended up were, making but, the playoffs. But Nathan that was Peterman that was a mistake. Was a fifth round, Nathan Peterman was a fifth round pick. Yeah, he's not and, your friend. Tyrod right. refused right. to throw but, the ball over the middle. So I mean, it's it's a different. Right. It's I, I see what you're saying, but my it's point a is, it's kind of a young coaching staff, right? It's inexperienced coaching staff. 
And that's just going to be – things like that are going to happen. It's, can you learn from it or not? And we'll see right. what Brian Flores does from here. Yeah. I, I still think they're going to be a threat next season. Yeah, I, I think they're in good hands, man. I don't I don't think – you know, now people go as far as to say two is the best quarterback in the division. Like, you freaking kidding Get me? Get the hell out of here. Yeah, man. it ain't even – look, dude, he ain't no. there yet. And they I were think he'll big never big have the upside that well, Josh Allen has. Now there's film out there on Tua. Things change when there's film out there. Ask Lamar Jackson about it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a, it's a game changer. But it is cool to I – mean, well, it is cool to see that even though the Bills did not play this weekend, every team in the AFC East got an L. Right? That's right. So yeah. the, Bills the Bills won even yeah. resting, yep. which was – that's – I mean, we don't we don't get that very often as Bills fans, right? But – um. How about that New England game too? Woo, Houston, hey, twenty-seven, yeah. twenty. They had the ball. They, they what? They had three hundred and some odd yards from <laughs> from Cam, and they still lost the game. So, yeah. congrats to that Pats team. Man. Yeah, I love it. yeah, no, no, yeah. It, uh, you know, Cam Newton, man. Are they even going to bring him back next year? That that's no. one of the things that like. How can what they? are you no, going to do? What are you going to do? Um, with that roster. I mean, they got, to, they got a lot of holes. They got they're going to have to draft a quarterback, you know, hope for the best. Yeah. I mean, they're going to have to do something because yep. uh, they're going to have to hit the reset button. A lot of teams don't want to take their medicine and, and hit that reset. But when it comes to roster rebuilding, I know the, the Broncos, again, are going to have to do that because, you know, from the outset looking in, you know, it doesn't look like uh, Drew Locke is going to, is that guy. Uh, so, you know, you can, you can only, you know, you know, run from the, the roster reaper for so long before it bites you in the ass. <laughs> and uh, the Patriots are on their way, and I think the Broncos are, are a victim of that. And the Chargers just now have gotten to the point where they got serious and drafted the damn quarterback. Uh, so there's teams out there that I don't understand why. You know, that's what I say. Like, that's why I was always a big proponent of the Bills drafting the quarterback for Sean McDermott's first year. I mean, those things matter. You, you have to have a young, good quarterback in place or even start the maturation process. Um, of of that guy in his journey getting better. So, you know, you can think you're king of the jungle for so long, Belichick, but at some point, man, you got to take your medicine like everybody else does, buddy. Yeah. Um, and it takes a long time sometimes. It does. You got to be patient. You got to be patient. And the Bills the are lucky. Top 10 picks are still 50%. Yeah. Right? Well, well, lucky. For quarterbacks. 50% right. We're lucky successful that or un- unsuccessful. The, the Josh Allen turn blossomed in, in his third year. Yeah, yeah. Because that doesn't usually happen. You know, the, the Bills, Bills got a guy. We know that. Yep. Yeah, yeah so we got really scenario. lucky. We got really lucky, man. So, um, so I don't think it was luck. That was think, calculation. Yeah, oh, really. man, I don't know, dude. Anytime like, you, got, think, you got lucky because Denver passed on Allen, right? Anytime. And that's yes. going to be the argument with them. They should have Andrew Josh Luck. Allen. Andrew Luck was the best quarterback prospect that we've seen in the last 10 to 15 years. Okay? Josh Allen does not come close to that. The, the quarterbacks that are drafted do not come close to that. So you, it's a risk when you take these guys because you just don't know. So the Bills did get lucky, right? They got lucky, and it's yeah. okay. I'll take that luck any day. Josh Allen's a great quarterback. It worked. It worked out. We were on the right side of the 50% for the Absolutely. first time in eight Absolutely. tries, right? So, I mean, yeah, it, it, it helps to be on the right side of half a chance when you <laughs> failed nine times before that. So All right. You guys, uh, here's one for you. Here, here's one. So 21 draft. Okay. Mm. What's the biggest, uh, what's the Bills' biggest need that you guys can see as of right now? Uh, mm. We're not talking about free agency. We don't know what those moves are going to be. Uh, so that does impact the draft. But if we were to stop the season today and the draft was tomorrow, um, oh, you, don't okay. have to get, you don't have to give me a player, oh. but you can give me a position group gotcha. that you would like to see the Bills address. What, what is their biggest need that you guys can see moving forward uh, in 21. Go ahead, Right Eric. now, if all these players are on this team. Yeah, yeah, right now, what we uh, have, right? Gotcha. Because uh, I, so I, I broke this down into categories on okay. this one because I knew this right. would come at some point. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's the bye week, so, you know, you got to play yeah. something. You can Plus only we, have one, yeah. though. What, what's your top one? Top one? I'd go offensive line. And here's on why. This you got, team. On this team. And I, go, I know they're good, right? Yeah, they, okay. They're working good. Everything. The depth is great. But you got five players on the final year of their contract in uh, Naseki, Feliciano, Winners, mm-hmm. Daryl mm-hmm. Williams, and Bakker, all in the last year of their, their contracts. Are you going to resign them? Or, you know, I, the uncertainty freaks me out. So I, I go O line. That's yeah. the biggest need I right think now. I would have said O line if, if, if we were talking about the end of the year when those guys were free agents. But right now on this team, I'd say the number one need is a tight end. 
because that's the one playmaker Interesting. we don't have, right? If we had a playmaking <clears throat> tight end on the offense, could <clears throat> you imagine? I mean, look at these <clears throat> games that we're watching on these national televised games, right? Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, what a freaking matchup that was, right? And I mean, these guys are are making play. If we had a, a guy like that who could trap, you know, I, I don't know how many tight ends are expected to go in this draft that are See, elite. The, I think I, one, I had right? tight end on the list too, but the problem with that is our coordinator doesn't like to dial it up for the tight end. So but still, well, it, we talk twenty twenty one draft. Is it, is it exactly. that he doesn't like to dial it up, or he exactly. just knows he doesn't have a tight end that's capable? Of, think I of mean, it. He's the, it's the Cole. It's the Cole Beasley effect, right? Cole Beasley should get every pass of every game. Period. <laughs> because Brown, Brown, and and Diggs are covered every time, and Beasley is going to be open. You could literally throw it to him every single time. You add a tight end to that mix, and now you've got the tight end and Beasley along with Diggs, and and, and you've just exploded yeah. everything. I mean, there's no way you can cover those guys, and you're going to draw. Now, I say that if if Dayball is going to get a head coaching job, and he's not going to be the coordinator next year, I think tight end does move up the list as top need for the Bills. With a fresh co- coordinator coming in, a nice tight end with, is like the missing link to that offense, right? Look what Travis Kelsey's doing for his team. Yeah, you know the game winner last season. Good relationship I mean, with the quarterback. I mean, yeah, you're not gonna, you're right. not gonna. Find I, I, take, and, I just to want an upgrade. I don't want. I mean, that's well, top but level. If elite. there's a guy who you think could reach that potential, yeah. you gotta take him in the draft. You know. I mean, even even I'm, th- I'm trying to think of somebody a little less than that than Travis okay. Kelsey. Okay, let's go Trent like that. John cool. Smith is one Greg that came to mind for me. For the Greg, Panthers, now a few he's years old, ago. but yeah, he's right. old now. But like what he did for that Carolina team, yes, exactly. You know? Yeah, so so you're going you're going offensive line, you're going like a uh, guard tackle, you going center. Uh, I think uh, Daryl Williams will probably get re-signed. I think you got to go guard because Quinn Spain's out too. I'd, I'd go guard. Okay, you want to go guard. So yeah. Anthony, you want to go tight end? If it's this team right now, so we talked on the podcast on Friday a little bit about. You know, what's the biggest draft? What's going to be at the left side of the screen on the draft for the Buffalo Bills? And my answer then was guard, because I do think with our free agents that are pending and the the, the positions of need that we, we need to draft a guard. Even if you sign a guy, you're going to have to draft somebody somewhere in the top tier. So I think guard is, is up there. But for me right now on this team, the position I desire the most is tight end. And there's a lot of talk about cornerback, too. I do think we could use a cornerback, too. But when you look at getting Levi Wallace back, having Dane Jackson, Cam Lewis coming back. Those are guys that can fill that role. And so, we know that McDermott's scheme defense, we could wish for a number two cornerback all day. It's not happening. I will right, bet so, any amount that it's not going to happen because okay, so that's here, just not how we operate. Here, here, here's, here's my take on this. I'm going to go cornerback, and I'll tell yeah, you why. Okay. Uh, you can only put these duct tape uh, old vets quarterback number two for so long and you really can't depend on a a rookie late round rookie draft pick to come in and really uh make a big impact now we do like Dane Jackson from done, the, from, from what we've seen so far and it's very small sample size however um you do need a guy that can come in and, and play lights out across some Tredavious White uh you need someone who can actually make plays on the ball and as is, is a fierce, sure. fierce tackler. Now, this this draft class coming up, you could possibly see five first round corners coming in. This. So you're not going to see a lot of interior offensive linemen that are going to have first round grades. You can probably get those later in the second or third round if you choose to do so. But money spot for Great me back. would be would be cornerback. The Bills definitely need a cornerback that they can that they can rely on because Trey White um, gets hurt. What happens? <laughs> I'm Might not arguing. I'm not. I would love that. I do think that is a rational, logical story to tell. But <laughs> I, if I'm a betting man, right? I am. I and my bet is ten times against picking a cornerback. It, it is. They will not do it in the first round. I won't believe it until I see it. If somebody told me it was going to happen, I'd tell them they were lying to me because it's. It's just. There's. That's not how McDermott operates. I mean, I agree. We we want that. We need that. We want some kind of security blanket over there. But I think they're more likely to continue on with guys like Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson, and and some veteran or player who was injured who needs a second chance at a low contract year right. just to fill in there and get the most out of them. Because no, we, we don't have an elite corner now. But when you combine Levi Wallace and Josh Norman, or Levi Wallace, Josh Norman, and you know now Dane Jackson. 
that's a pretty good combo to have at your number two cornerback. It's right. not. Think, yeah, but if you got to play all those not guys, you don't snaps. have a second. You don't, you don't have a cornerback. Well, it depends on what you want, right? Players. I mean, we know Josh Norman is good at punching the ball out. Is good Look, at making well, I got, turnovers. I got two things. But he's been targeded one. and taken ahead, over. Go ahead, Eric. Two things. So first, I think McDermott's proven that he doesn't need two solid cornerbacks to be a successful in the passing game right now in the current NFL, right? They've been top three in the league the last two years. You know, they're getting better this year. They will step back this year. But I think he's proven that his scheme will work with some lower-level corner on opposite Trey White. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other side of that, though, is I think if the Bills can win a a few playoff games, get to the championship game, let's say they lose to Kansas City, that could change his opinion, right? Because this team, to get over the hump, you might need a second cornerback. I like if that. that's the case, this is a good draft to get a solid cornerback. Absolutely. And, and Brandon Bean does take the best player available. And you mean to tell me at the at the end of round one, there's going to be a stud corner there. I mean, it, you know, and think of it like this. It may not be a cornerback, but you may see a uh, like a hybrid safety kind of that can kind of oh, is that would be very multiple. You know, he doesn't the, the Bills do not have a guy that can play that that Buffalo nickel position. Mm-hmm. That uh, that McDermott desires. They were very high on uh, the guy the Patriots took in the second round, uh, Kyle Duggar. Um, I don't know why they didn't take Jeremy Chin or Christian Fulton, but those would have been two great picks that they could have had in the second round instead of taking AJ and Vanessa. Um, however, uh, the, those are those are important things to look at. I mean, I think you do need a guy who can match up with tight ends very well. You need a guy who can run with the likes of Kansas City. Well, Pittsburgh and so forth, uh, because those, like you were mentioning, Eric, that's a great point that you had. Those are the kind of things, those X factor kind of things that you need to uh, mitigate some of these other teams' biggest strengths. I will say this, you know, some people are talking about it in the chat. Everything we've mentioned so far is great and definitely, I think, is on point, but it all becomes moot if they decide not to re-sign Matt Milano, because if that happens and Milano leaves, Number one, without a doubt, no question about it, our number one need is linebacker. We have nobody on this team to fill that role. We've seen that up I'm close and personal him. now that Milano's out. I'm so not resigning him. If you cannot resign Milano, the problem with Milano is I think I'm worried that even though he's been injured and so he's had a subpar season or whatever, some team is going to offer him 16 mil a year because they know what he's capable of. And, and the Bills are not going to match that offer. They're going to probably say, in my ideal scenario, it's like, Okay, you had a rough year. We'll give you one year, whatever it is, thirteen million, right? And then we'll re-sign you to the big deal once you've proven it again, right? Yeah. And that that also buys us that salary cap room for a year that's going to be strapped in salary. And then it leaves it up to Milano. Do you want to stay with the Bills for thirteen million and then get a big contract, or are you going to sign sixteen million well, a year elsewhere? And I know. He That's did say that he wants out. to stay. He, he did. His desire is to Absolutely. stay with the Bills. However, for that, for what he's going to be asking for, even if it's twelve or thirteen million, I think I can do better. I mean, there's a, there's prospects in this draft that linebacker yeah. like Cam. Well, then it would immediately Michigan become number one. That, that that you know who don't have a, a, a injury history. That you mm-hmm. know your availability matters, and I think that's one of the things that's hurt Matt Milano. That's probably the only negative thing I can really say. I, about him I have been a Milano is, is availability. I love yeah. him. I want to keep him. I'm hoping it happens regardless of what the cost is. But uh, if it doesn't, uh, my take right now is we could trade out of the first round, right? I don't know. We're going to be at the end of the first round. We know that. Trade down, get a couple of second round picks or a second and a third, and, and just let it happen because there's no one player that's going to you know suddenly come in and be a difference maker. <laughs> if, we, if we don't sign Milano, Line, we're trading up in the draft to get whoever's the number one linebacker, right? I don't know. That don't guy's do that. going I don't 15. Do we're trading already, up to get uh, that guy. They already, they already because it's already our guy, biggest right? hole. Well, I think front yeah, but seven. Five years ago at this point. You can make an argument that front seven is a need for this team, right? You know, with Star's probably going to be back. You have him under contract, so defensive tackle's probably out. But you, you have to get some kind of pass rush. And I think right. if they if they sign Milano or don't re-sign Milano, you still need a linebacker, right? You, you still yeah, need somebody to help, right. you need, especially you need with some, Milano's, yeah. you know, Milano's yes. uh, injury history and things like that. But then I think you, you take a guy in the third or fourth right? round. So I say defensive end is my second need here hmm. uh, if you do resign these these offensive linemen. Just because what's going on with Trent Murphy, right? Oh, I mean, are we yeah, sure is Murphy's Vanessa gone. the guy? Well, I think Jerry I mean, Hughes could be gone I doubt they resign him as well, right? Who? 
Trent Murphy. No, it's oh, yeah. not happening. No, it's no. not happening. Yeah. Guy's already overpaid. He's going to have, like we said, he's going to have three sacks right. in the week 17 meaningless yeah. game against Miami. And everybody's got a hole like, there. Oh, then, you know, no, he sucked. I think you, you do know. have a hole at outside linebacker on both sides because of Milano's injury history, then AJ Klein's up and down performances. I mean, I, you know, linebacker, I think is there's a good argument to be made that that is the number one need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I don't think they're going to pick that in the first round. Um, now, now defensive end is something that's intriguing. There's going to be some defensive ends. Uh, you know, they, they tend to get picked higher, uh, you know, than their value actually I allows, think- but like somebody like Quincy Roche out of Miami will be a great selection late in the first round. Uh, there's a yeah. couple late round defensive ends that would service Buffalo. Well, they kind of have that, that twitch and that bend and juice that, that the bills need at the position. I like hearing you say that. Cause to me, like I said, that supports for me trade out. Trade back into the front of the second round, get another late second round or an early third round pick, and pick up two of those positions of need. Get that linebacker depth, get that second cornerback, whatever it may be. Get that pass rusher that you're saying there's depth there. So, so if there's depth there, that's more reason to trade back. Still get one of those five guys that you're saying are at the end of yeah. the round. I haven't done any draft work yet. No, no, no. So, no, no. so, so I'm going all, you're all saying, speculation you know? right now. It's all speculation. Yeah, yeah. When the now, Bills will be picking 32, so. Exactly. Oh, right, right. Exactly. You know? I don't know uh, how much – I don't think we're going to see a lot of trades in this year's coming draft because of the, the salary cap implications. I think teams are going to want to hold on to their picks. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a smart thing to do if you ask me. So you, we may be seeing situations where wherever you know they're slated to pick, they may just have to pull the trigger there. Yeah, I don't know if they'll be able too. to uh, accumulate more draft capital, but we'll see. All right, that, but that's a good you know. There's more NFL draft talk to come. Uh, we're definitely going to start knocking that out um, as we get closer to the end of the season and into the off season. But I had to throw that in there because that's something that we need to start really uh, looking forward to. Uh, what's going to happen with this Bills roster next season? I know we're in the thick of a, a Super Bowl run or a deep playoff run or whatever you want to call it, but those are the kind of things that we're going to start uh, hashing out. All right, so now uh, we are going into our Bills talk. This is the inside slant. Uh, this is where we kind of uh, talk about some of the things that are happening right now um, with the Bills. I have a few topics that we're going to get kicked off on, and uh, we're, we kind of go from there. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you guys about tonight is I'm not buying the Mitch Moore smoke. Huh. Yeah. I'm not buying it. Uh, you know, they, they spent a ton of money, made Mitch Morse at the time, the highest paid, uh, center in the NFL. Now what's happening, right? We, we, we saw that, you know, he was benched for what reason? We don't know. Was it a health reason or was it schematic? Was it to the point where, you know, McDermott says, well, he felt like, you know, they had good chemistry with some of the other guys like Ike Bakker and so forth. And I'm thinking like, no, <laughs> wait a second. Like that don't that don't make sense to me. Are, were you sitting him out because of his his history with concussions and so forth? You just wanted now, I know the bills are kind of cautious when it comes to injuries. So I thought it was that. But when you listen to the comments, you're like, damn, dude, like. Why are we shitting on Mitch Morse now? Like, why Why would we start him? And I don't think the Bills have the luxury to be playing uh, footsies with the damn, uh, you know, I th- offensive line position. What are your thoughts? I, th- I think you used the right word in smoke, right? It's This is all just, I don't know what McDermott's doing. If it's, you know, he probably couldn't come out and say, we benched Morse because we wanted him to get an extra week of rest on top of the bye, right? So they, they, that's why, and Feliciano certainly did a good job at center. So it wasn't like they needed him to come back right away. And it made sense to maybe leave him on the bench and let him get more rest. But now he's just blowing smoke. It's, it's all just McDermott trying to be mysterious, saying, oh, well, we, we'll see. We'll see what happens. In the press conferences, it's almost hilarious hearing him answer these questions. Because you're like, come on, McDermott, we're not that stupid. We know Morse right. is going to be starting at center unless there's some other grand conspiracy that we don't know is going on right now. Mitch Morse is the center. John Feliciano will be at guard. And hopefully we can see our offensive line at full strength with those the starting five expected out there. But, yeah, I mean, it's just McDermott. Every time he answers these questions, I, I get frustrated because I'm like, come on, dude. Just say Mitch Morse is the center. He's going to be playing there. He's he's healthy now, right? That's all you need to say. Right. But he does have a history with concussions, so it could be just precautionary. Right? Look, let's get real. Like the, the Arizona game in the playoff race wasn't very significant, right? Uh so 
the games are going to get, the significance of the playoffs is the next four or five weeks. Right? You got Pittsburgh in there. You got yeah. New England in there. Um, is- so, like, why not rest your, the leader of your offensive line it for the sense. Arizona game going into the bye? Now he's going to come back fresh, and we're going to make a run for the playoffs, get a good seed, and win a playoff game. You know, that, that's the way I see it. It's just strategy in my eyes. Yeah, and he doesn't want to give it away to the opponent, right? We're, we're not going to tell you Mitch Morris is our center because John mm-hmm. Feliciano might be. But he's not, though. You they can ignore the concussion history as well. You know, it could, like we talked about last week on Tuesday, this, this could be very well be like a serious concern. And, and yeah. they're holding him out, or the family's concerned, he's concerned, considering retirement. We don't know. We're not going to know. That were the stuff. case, he'd be inactive, and he was not inactive for that game. Maybe still deciding. I mean, but who knows? Yeah, I, I think, I really do think that uh, Mitch Morse does give you the best opportunity to, uh, have the best rotation in the line. Now, the thing is, though, I, I think it may tend to be more a uh, scheme because Mitch Morse is he, he's definitely his best attribute is his mobility, um, how he can get to the second level. You want to get him as a pull it, you know, he can pull really well to kind of free up these running backs and so forth. So yeah. um, I don't see Ike Botker being able to do that. And I, I really do think I love Feliciano at center, but his best position is guard. So I don't understand why you need to make it more difficult than it needs to be. Put the damn guy in there and let him and let him sort it yes. out. Um, now, I wouldn't say he's been perfect this year by any means, but I think he's better than what we have. We don't have great, solid offensive line depth. I mean, it's an epidemic around the NFL where teams don't have great depth. So um, we got quarterback football guys that can get the job right. done. But Josh Allen's wanna... so good in the pocket, too. That, I mean, yeah, and he's that, still that, running around back there, but he's the able game, to voice packs and make plays. I mean, that's and, huge. It's yeah, the run it's game that, that that that's the missing piece in the offense is the run game. If you can't run the ball effectively, we're gonna have games where you like we've seen this year where you know the, the offense won't be as effective because you can't run the football. I think you know? we can run the football though, we just choose not to. Nah, well, we they effectively. haven't showed that yet. They haven't showed I mean, that the New England game was all run. That's because yeah, they gave it to us and we took it. Right. Won. I'll, I'll answer that, Ford. Yeah, he, yes. I think Ford is definitely part of your starting five. Is it he's because healthy? of his ability? I don't know about right now. He's just not polished yet. But he, because of the the brevity of the situation, yeah. I mean, I I think Ford is your he's over part of that top five or who else over would be Ike yeah. or Brian Winters? I mean, Winters is, for sure. God, it's yeah. bad. But Ford does give you that nasty streak, and and you know, pair with Feliciano is hey. I would put Ford at left guard just because. Yeah. He's kind of masked between, you know, yeah. Morse and Deion Dawkins. And then you could put Feliciano back at right guard, right? And then Darrell Williams at right tackle. And that's a solid offensive line where, you know, you don't have to depend on Cody Ford to do so much. But Cody Ford has been bad. He has yeah. been bad this year. Um, and he needs to step it up. And, and this whole getting injured, and I'm not saying he's faking his injury by any means, but he, we do need to see him healthy. Yeah. Um, so... Of those starting five, he he's the weak spot now. Yeah, yeah, for for sure. Right now, he's the weak spot, and he, he could be definitely. replaced. They could put back in Bakker or or uh, Winters, but we, we don't want to see that. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to see that. Now, yeah. people say, "Well, by Bakker, he's been playing well." I mean, he's he's had his moments. I ain't gonna like totally shit on the dude, but I don't want to. I don't want to have to see you play. <laughs> I don't want to have to see Ryan Bates play. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to see that. You know, I, I definitely don't want to see that. It's good um, to have the depth, and they're serviceable, right. but yeah, certainly right. not our best. Right. Uh, here's our next one. What to make of Moda Singletary? Did he lose it? I mean, mm. we're talking about now. I was wrong about Moda Singletary. I, I felt like he could have been an elite running back, which he's not. Um, so I'll take the L on that for sure from, from you know. But did he lose it? Or is it wh- – wh- why is it that – I mean, he just – they, he, it's just not happening, dude. I mean, it's not happening. Zach Moss too. I mean, they're they're kind of uh, average. Yeah, I mean, I think they're both they're both good situational players. The real problem here is your quarterback came out this year as a legit quarterback, right? Passing games on fire. So you know they're not going to feed the ball to Singletary all that much, especially when. Zach Moss in, in certain situations is having, you know, a good season. 
Well, so, I think the, the argument goes both ways, right? Yes, the passing game is on fire, but that should make your run game even better, right? The reason right. Singletary was so good last year, we talked about this every time uh, he was on the field, it, it was open. He had space to run in versus when they put in Frank Gore and there was eight men in the box and he got well, one. Oh, I got to mention right? this. I forgot so, to mention this. Frank Gore has more rushing yards than Singletary this year. Oh, my God. Wow, that is well, Nobody. Cares. I don't care who you are, Anthony. Nobody predicted no. that. No. <laughs> God, no. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. But and, and Singletary, he's it's to me, he's not he still does what he does best, which is yards after contact, let him get the ball, give him the ball in space, and he he's electric, but he has to improve. And a lot of that can go back to our just previous conversation about the offensive line. He's not working with the premium offensive line. They certainly weren't opening holes. They certainly weren't able to find much. Uh, Singletary is still the guy to me. He's still the back. He proved it last year. He can get it done. We know what he's all about. Zach Moss is coming into his own. Hopefully he continues to improve. Again, I thought in the preseason that they would slowly work in Zach Moss. Now it's getting to that point where it's 50-50 is a reasonable thing now if they're both producing. And if Singletary continues to falter and Zach Moss continues to do well, guess what? Now it's going to be 70-30, you know? So... I don't, I don't, I think it'll stay mostly Singletary still the guy. He's still the one I trust to get the ball and, and get six yards on a play, bust through a defender, whatever. Zach Moss is capable of that too when he has a hole. We saw Zach Moss have vision problems in when early in the season before he got hurt, right? And and Singletary does not have that problem. His problem is the blockers weren't opening holes as big for him this time, right? And he wasn't able to slide through smaller spaces. So I think they both have huge room for improvement. I'm not as worried about them. And remember, these guys are second year and a rookie. So we're going to have them for the next four years, hopefully. And they're going to continue to trend in the right direction. We don't need them to be Derrick Henry. We don't need them to be, Shit, you know, like these elite. <laughs> yeah, we'd like that, but you're not going to have that. No, on this you, no, not yeah, not so. when you're drafting a running back in the third round and, you know, most of those guys that are elite went in the first round. So yeah, Demon Singletary. Right what you would expect from him. He's also down about three carries per game. If you break it down, you know, uh, average attempts per game. Last season it was around thirteen. This season's around ten. He only played twelve games last year. He's on his tenth <laughs> game this year, going on eleven. So I mean, he has lost about three carries per game, and yeah. that ha- that has an impact. It's you know, the yards per carry, too. That's significant. Yards per carry is down a whole yard. I mean, it's, was, he set a very high bar in his rookie year, right. though. So you could, you could say, okay, old yeah. line's not picking it up as good as it was last year. But I, I think it, too, it could be, you know, the, the offense last year is kind of similar to the run game this year, and that's on film. Teams are prepared for that now, right? That could be a part of it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's definitely something to uh, – to monitor moving forward, I mean, hopefully, like we talked about, these additions to the offensive line of those guys getting healthy will definitely uh, allow or permit the running game to be sparked. We definitely, I mean, in, look, in the playoffs, you're not going to be able to toss the ball around the yard. I mean, we've seen that. That's not a recipe for success in the playoffs. You have to be able to run the ball effectively and play defense. So uh, those are those are some areas to improve on. If the Bills are really want to be considered one of the top teams in the NFL, you have to be able to run the football. There has to be balance to your offense. So um, so as we near the end of our show, all right, this is what's the take. Uh, this is where you, the fans, can ask us questions, uh, Bills related or anything off topic that you guys want to get at. Uh, we're we're going to open it up for a few minutes here before we head on off. But uh, feel free to answer any questions. <clears throat> so this Sunday, prediction. Now, I did say this is the uh, revenge game for Josh Allen. If you guys remember, Josh Allen's first game was against where he started was against the Chargers and they got their butts kicked. So, I, you know, as an athlete, you keep those things in you your mind that. and you remember those things. And it was in Orchard Park. Uh, I think Josh Allen's going to see that and be like, you know what, dude, I, I got something to prove here. And you got this rookie coming in here with that ugly ass haircut. I'm coming in here. They're not coming to my house, and uh, I'm going to put it on them. What you guys think about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Put me, in. I'll put me in, coach. But, yeah, I, I like that. I, I did not know that, that that was his first start. I didn't remember that. But uh, I like the idea of, of a revenge game there for Josh Allen. 
But remember who's coaching for that Chargers team now. It's Anthony Lynn, formerly of the Buffalo Bills. So it, it'll be interesting for him, too, coming back. He wants this game, too. The problem is I just think the Chargers are not as good as the Bills. The Chargers have found t- ways to lose. They gave up 27 points to the Jets last week. Yeah. You know, it's it's <clears throat> certainly they are struggling on defense and and overall just to, to find that little bit of it factor that you need to win in these competitive close games. And and I honestly think that this could be a, a, a blow-up game for the Bills coming off the rest, having two weeks to prepare. And playing a team that it, again they gave up twenty seven points to the Jets, that's that's you're you're if you've given up that much to that offense, our offense is pretty strong, and and they're going to be struggling to to find their way against us. Right. Another difference in that game with Josh Allen's first start versus the Chargers is Philip Rivers on the other side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. This time you're going to have a rookie quarterback traveling across the country. I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like. It's actually been nice, but. uh so I don't think that'll be a factor, but rookie quarterback versus Sean McDermott's defense, expect him to be confused. Hopefully you get a couple turnovers, and I think the Bills team can capitalize. Like like Anthony said, I think it'll be a multi-score game for the Bills. All right, who wants to take that question? Who's going to start at cornerback two? Jane Jackson deserves it, in my opinion. That's according to Justin. Who do you guys think? Who's going to start at cornerback two? My yeah, guess would be Sunday. Levi Wallace. I agree. If it were me, if I were coach, Dane Jackson's going in there to prove a point. Look, this kid's earned it. That's what we talk about. Earn it. What has yeah. he done wrong? Nothing. He's done everything right. He's earned it. And and Levi Wallace hasn't lost it, right? So it's tough because he was injured, and that's why he was out. Josh Norman certainly didn't show anything when he was in there. So I'm not going to put him in that conversation right now as a starter, even though from preseason he was listed as CB2, you know, on the roster, on the on the. So you're going, yeah. you're going Dane Jackson, but I think, Eric, I, who you got? if it were me, I think they're going to no. start Levi. I yeah, think it's I, Levi I on a short that. leash. Right, cause Levi hasn't played in a while, so I mean, right. if he comes out cold, yeah. expect him to be yanked, and Dayton Jackson comes in. But I mean, Josh Norman's back as well, so it'll be I interesting mean, I to would, see. I would totally with putting Dayton Jackson in the slot. I mean, yeah, we well, talked how a little bit about that. Can you get than Taron Johnson right now in the slot? I wouldn't get too creative. This 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 team's really good at receiver, right? Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, true. I mean, Hunter yeah. Henry's a, in there as a tight end. There's a physical element to Dane Jackson's game, and and you know you're not going to throw Josh Norman in there at, at uh, nickel. He's going to get roasted. That boy gets roasted everywhere he plays. Uh, Levi Wallace. I mean, you know, I, I just think that you know they're going to have to get creative because you know, like you said, the Chargers do have a really good. Uh, they got some good receivers on that team. Austin Eckler. Yeah. I think they just yeah, got him, they got uh, offensive got weapons. Back. I don't know if he's going to play this week. But, Herbert's uh, doing well, too. I mean, I expect them to score some points on us, but a rookie quarterback against our defense is not going to be looking like, you know, some elite passer. He's not going to be, you know, Patrick Mahomes against our defense, right? So our offense is, is going to take advantage of their defense, and I just don't trust a rookie quarterback. To get it done okay. against our defense. here's a here's a question uh, from Reptile here. He says, uh, "Which rookie quarterback will the NFL talking heads anoint as this week's best quarterback <laughs> since Joe Montana?" <laughs> well, well, it, it well, can't be well, Joe Burrow. Yeah, say Joe Burrow's out. Joe Burrow. so. so Herbert, um, yeah, so Herbert's the only one left, really. I mean, obviously, uh, two has fallen from grace for this week. Although, if you're saying after the games. All of a sudden, Tua wins another game. Oh, it praise him. He beat the Jets, right? So now he is the second coming. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. They're, they're never going to get off that bandwagon. We could do it this way. That like if, if Aaron Rodgers gets up by 30 points, we see Jordan Love. Possibility <laughs> it could be him. <laughs> there you He's go. He's the only one they haven't named Joe Montana yet. There's a controversy yet. there. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I got to put this one up. This is, this is my friend, Matt Moscone saying Josh Allen is a hack because that's what he's been saying for years. But we know the truth. He's eaten his crow this year because he knows Josh Allen is a legitimate franchise quarterback now. So, yeah, welcome to the club, Matt. Now you now you got to sign the apology form just like everybody else about Josh <laughs> Allen because he's here to stay. <laughs> hey, so check this out. Uh, does Frazier throw some crazy stuff at Justin Herbert? I feel like he will be perplexed by some yes. of the, courage, uh, the coverages Frazier runs. Yeah, I really do like the Bills game plan that they've been having the past few weeks, how they kind of been mixing their blitzes and coverages and stuff. Um, I want to see more of that. I mean, like, you got to take advantage of, you know, Justin Herbert, him being a rookie. Uh, now, he is playing extremely well. 
but I want to see some confusion, you know, uh, I, I want to see, you know, which three or four are going to blitz. It shouldn't just be the, you know, it shouldn't just be the defensive line. I mean, you have to like disguise that mm-hmm. somehow, some way. Um, I do predict that he does throw a couple interceptions this game. I, I oh, yeah. really do think that that's going to happen, but I do think the bills need to come out and they need to uh, establish the game early, you know, whatever that looks yes. like, you know, you got to start fast. Well, remember, we're still coming off that tough win or tough loss to the Arizona Cardinals at the end of the game, right? That was the last moment we saw this team on the field. So they're going to, I have a feeling they're going to come out with some energy, man. They're going to come out yeah. hyped, yeah. ready to go. They're rested. They're angry after that loss, that winning, yeah. losing that way, having to deal with that and then sleep with that for, for two weeks before getting back on the field. They're going to be, I think they're really going to pound it when they get the ball and, and just score as quickly as possible. And on defense too, I, I like the comment here that said they're going to they're gonna show some different things on this rookie quarterback. I think that's exactly what you're going to see. They're going to line up eight guys and drop them back into coverage. Then they're going to line up eight guys and come right after him, and he's going to have to get the ball out quick. And yeah, I would be, be careful with the, with the blitzes like, like we've seen the past few weeks because Herbert's, Justin Herbert can yeah, step he can up throw. and he can sling it. 65 70 yards you know with zero effort right so yes and these receivers can get down the field and make a play 50 50 ball right that's what they do so i, I, I would think- be very hesitant to to show uh blitzes on the line right i think you might have to play back and get and do the best you can against a guy like mike williams i mean there's not much you can do <laughs> who's going to guard mike williams on for the bills he's a physical freak he and, is, but you know, look at not. but Trey White can get scrappy, but like we saw DK beat him up a little bit. I mean, Mike Williams is that dude. He's good for a fifty-yard play and a touchdown every game. Well, we'll He's see. Real good. Yeah, I mean, we'll but a see. touchdown isn't going to win you this game against our offense. Like I said, our offense is going to take advantage of that defense, and and their defense, their offense is going to be somewhat limited against our defense, even if they play their best. These they're going to get their points. But statistically, they're... offensive and defensively are very similar. Yeah. Uh, offensively, they run the ball a lot better than we do. We're about the same when it comes to passing. Uh, they, they are a good team on third down, just like the Bills are. Uh, so it's going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game. Um, I, I, so. I, I think the Bills come out with the W here. But uh, yeah, you're. I I don't want you to sit back and just let Justin Herbert get comfortable in the pocket. I think you need to send pressure. You need to send pressure, make him make decisions, yes. make him know where he's going with the ball. Buster. Yeah, you're gonna have to, um, because I'm not trying to sit here and let these guys, you know, straight roast us. And you don't want to get Keenan Allen too much time exactly, uh, yeah. off the line of scrimmage. I mean, that guy, he's incredible. So good route runner. Yeah, he's he can. They got their hands full. Bills got their hands full this week. But I, I, can they win? Absolutely. I mean, they, they can beat the Chargers. No, no big deal. Well, uh, I think that wraps it up for our show tonight, guys. Uh, it's been it's been real. It's been real. Look, it's nice to get some some human interaction <laughs> uh, with the homies here. Uh, you know, we got this Sunday, and then next week we got uh, the Bills play on Monday night. So the next four or five games are prime time outside of this week. Right. The and, Denver uh, game will now be Saturday night, right? That came out today. Yeah, Saturday yes. at like four thirty Eastern time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. National so, game. Yeah. I mean that would be sweet to go to. I don't know if so anybody out there in the Denver area, you wanna go on and throw your boy a couple no, tickets. No longer <laughs> they're no longer allowing fans at the game, so that isn't going no, to No, no, dude. I, I know somebody who was at the game on Sunday. <laughs> Sunday was the yeah. Sunday was that the was last, the last game. one? They've announced that for the rest oh, of the season yeah. there will be no fans. He, he was there so, illegally. He, tell you. No, he was there Sunday. <laughs> Sunday they had fans, but they said that that was the last game they're going to allow fans. So oh, that sucks. No more fans. There's, there will be no tickets to the Bills Broncos uh, game. Oh, yeah, man. sucks. Sucks for us who are here. I missed it the last time they were in town. I was out of town for a conference. I always go. Now to. I'm here, and they're, they're, they're no fans at the game. So. Suck. Damn. Well, back to the drawing board. I guess we watched it on TV. But uh, yeah. anyways, man, it was good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, we're glad to have you back, man. <laughs> Say it enough. Yeah, man. I'm. I'm Continue I'm to heal up. Feels normal I'm again. Tired. I'm tired. I, like I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> like you don't even know, man. Like it's back to sleep and uh, watching horrible bosses too. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, happy Thanksgiving to uh, all of you guys, man. Thank you for for tuning in with us this week. We appreciate it. We will be uh, coming back at it uh, end of the week with the podcast. You know, we're going to figure that out. 
when we're going to drop that one or record that one because Thursday's Thanksgiving. But uh, anyway, man, we, uh, we're signing off and we out of here. Go Bills. Later.